Okay, Shalom. First, I want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahushai. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that rule well, that taught us this truth. And blessings to the elect and the remnant of Israelites who are scattered worldwide, who are predestined to be saved. Brother Yakal, coming with the second part of the breakdown of Revelation chapter 14. We're going to start at verse 7. Um, and this whole chapter is about three things death deliverance death destruction and deliverance death destruction and deliverance so when you're seeing what's going on there in our homeland in the in the gaza strip all right the whole world is going to be like that in these end times there's not going to be a, a place on this planet earth that's not going to be touched with the destruction that the lord is going to unleash because it's going to be the lord's anger all right and the lord uses men uh to deliver that anger but in the last days in these end times he's going to actually use his men his men all right his servants yahweh and the angels to do a lot of that destruction all right so it's very important that you know we stick to we pray that the Lord keeps us in his truth because it's not really down to us. It's really down to him, you know. And, I, and believe me, I've been in this truth for a while, so I've seen them come and go, man. You know, one minute they're a brother, the next minute they're a nigger, you know. And, and the worst kind of nigger, because the worst kind of nigger is a nigger that thinks that he's in his truth, you know. He's, he's not doing this, this uh, work in truth and sincerity. Okay, so we'll continue. Uh, Revelation chapter 14, verse 7. All right, we'll start verse 6 actually. All right, and I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having an everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell upon the earth. And that's what we're doing with these lessons, with these breakdowns, you know. And um, it's a beautiful thing, man, you know. When I was young, I wanted to have a business and, um, you know, uh, have my own business. In school, I used to buy and sell things. You know, people gave me an award uh, when I left school called the Del Boy, well, the Bill Boy Award, which is Del Boy Award. There's a, a program called Only Fools and Horses, and it was basically a hustler, a white hustler. And uh, they gave me an award um, uh, called the Bill, the Del Boy or Bill Boy Award because I was that kind of person in school. I mean, that's what I was known for. See, that was my ambition, but the Lord had different plans for me. And I'm happy that that, that um, the Lord brought me into his truth. You know, fuck a business, man. You know, we're talking about everlasting life here, man. We're talking about uh, uh, having crowns upon our head. You know, by the hell shine. You know, that's much more important. Okay. All right, so we're teaching this everlasting gospel to them that dwell upon the earth, to every nation, kindred, and tongue, and people, because Israelites have been scattered in every nation, all right? Therefore, they've got different tongues, different languages, all right? And therefore, they're not all going to look the same, you know? And I keep saying that, I, you know, we have, we, we, we have, we have to emphasize that um, uh, big time. Not every Israelite is going to look like me, even if they're from the Southern Kingdom right, or the Northern Kingdom. They might not look like an average Hispanic. If you go to Colombia or Ecuador, there's our people there that look very, very dark. They look totally different to most of the Hispanics that you see in America, you know. And even in the L.A. camp years ago, there was a, a, a young brother there. And he looked like he was a Elamite, but he wasn't. He was a, a from the Northern Kingdom. All right. Uh, so let's go to Jeremiah. So I just want to make this point. So we're gonna go through the chapter, but we're gonna get precepts so you can get full understanding of what the scriptures are saying through thy precepts. So I get understanding. All right. So if we've been scattered in all nations, so Israelites are over there in in Palestine. In the Gaza Strip, they're treated very badly. Uh, Afro-Palestinians, you know. And then you have uh, Palestinians that have sickle cell anemia. That look like Arabs. 
But how can they have sickle cell anemia? Because they're Israelites, huh? And they're the only, we're the only people that get that as a genetic condition. So your lineage has to go back to the southern kingdom of the nation of Israel. Okay? Jeremiah 12 and 9. All right? My heritage, heritage, all right, is unto me as a speckled bird. Speckled bird is different colors. All right? All right? So my heritage is upon me as a speckled bird. Let's look up the word heritage. So the Lord said my heritage. So what does the word heritage mean? All right. Heritage. All right. Uh, what's this called here? Let's see now. All right. Heritage. All right. Features belonging to the culture of a particular society. All right. Such as traditions, languages, or buildings which were created in the past and still have historical importance. So the Lord's heritage, the Lord's people, is definitely of, of importance. But the Lord is saying, my heritage, my, my, my heritage, Israelites, all right, wherever they're scattered, all right, okay? And remember, these people go back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, all right, is upon me as a speckled bird, different colors. See, look, a person's racial... Ethnic, religious, or cultural background. All right. So this is it. so the Lord's heritage is a big deal, and that's why He's going to save a small remnant of His heritage. All right. So it's going to be a small number, man. It's, this is not a big. Uh, it's, this is a big movement, but this is not the salvation. The pot of salvation is going to be very small. So my heritage. All right, my people that go back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You know. And now, because we've been scattered around the world, and we've and, and we're if the Israelite is in the Arab world, they're probably going to be Muslim, okay? So my heritage is upon me as a speckled bird, different colors. But look what it says: the birds round about her are against her. All right, and that's true wherever our people are, and, I, and I'm going to show you examples of that, man. All right. So, my heritage is upon me as a speckled bird. All right? All right, so Revelations uh, 14 and 7. All right? So, we've read that. All right? So, when it says every nation, kindred, tongue, and people, all right, Israelites have been scattered around the world. All right, so they're not all going to look like me. All right? For, uh, Revelations 14 and 7 saying, with a loud voice, fear God. And if you fear the Lord, you obey him, you know, and when you don't obey him, go on your knees and grovel for mercy, man. This is not a God you want, you want you, uh, to be played with. All right. We're his servants and the Lord is jacking us up, man, you know, but we're taking it, man. We have, and we have to take it cheerfully and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come. And worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. All right. So it's going to be a, a, a day and an hour where the Lord is going to release all hell, man. Okay. All right. On his enemies, man. And um, in America, two thirds, his own people, 66%, he's going to wipe out. Okay. Uh, verse 14. All right. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen. This is talking about America, Babylon the Great. It's fallen, that great city. And America was so-called great. And, and, it's, and, and it's fallen. That's why they keep saying, oh, Donald Trump, make America great again. So that shows you that it's on the slide. Because if you, you wouldn't say, oh, let's make America great again, if it was at the top. If it was at the top, why would you say again? And when was it great? When it was uh, uh, lynching niggas, raping squaws, scalping uh, 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 Gadites, you know, uh, 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 the Seminole Indians, the tribe of Reuben, destroying them, okay? 
Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And what is that wine? Her philosophies, her doctrines, man. All right. Her doctrines, her philosophies. So when you go to that scripture and in the Buddha and you look up fornication, it will say pornea. All right. And it will try to say Strong sexually. 4202. Pornaya. 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 All right. And it means illicit sexual intercourse, adultery, fornication, homosexuality, lesbian intercourse with animals. Uh, sexual relation, sexual intercourse with close uh, relations, you know, uh, sexual intercourse with a divorced man or woman, and then it will say metaphor, the worship of idols, all right, of defilement of idolatry as incurred by eating and sacrifice offered to idols. So when it's talking about uh, uh, fornication, it's talking about her philosophies, her doctrines. All right, because this is Mystery Babylon the Great, you know, Mystery Babylon the Great. And, you know, when uh, 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 John the Revelator saw the vision of, of, of the whore, you know, which, which is America, and, it, it, you know, it was a vision of a woman, you know, this woman was pretty and beautiful, and that symbolizes America. They make out like it's lovely and beautiful, but her philosophies and her doctrines are anti-God. They're totally the opposite. What kind of philosophies and doctrines, all right, have have they been uh, uh, spreading? One of the things is the feminist movement, and um, you see, look, feminists feminists who changed America, nineteen sixty three to nineteen seventy five, and that was done for many reasons, all right. And I, I will do a video on it, you know, Lord willing, time permitting, uh, I'll definitely do a video on it because it destroyed our people. Because one of the things they did, they got this bitch called Gloria Steinem, all right, all right, and she targeted the black community, Gloria Steinem, that, that's her name, and she was a CIA agent, see, the feminist was a spy, and this is an article here, CPD blog, all right, and there was many reasons why they did this, because they wanted to empower women, so the women can say, listen, I, I don't need a man, all right? I am an individual. It's my body. Because back then, you had the nuclear family. The man was out working. The woman was at home, all right? And uh, families were intact, especially our families, all right? So in order for them to brainwash our women in particular, to think they're free and independent, they had to get a movement going. And they did it through white women. And as you know, our people are so slave-minded that anything white people do, they follow, especially our women. It's the serpent beguiling Eve all over again. And what came out of this? Before, they used to only tax the man in the house. All right? Because mainly it was the men that was working. So now, if you can make a woman as an individual identity a minority in herself, now you can tax the man and the woman in the house. So after they gave a, a push for the, all these rights and they um, put it into legislation, now the American government could tax the man and the woman. Very smart. I saw that on a documentary. And when I was watching it, I was like, yeah, they are very smart, man. You know? You know, the Bible says this, this guy is wiser than Daniel. But also, it, it destroyed the nuclear family. It affected whites in particular, but it affected us even more. And at that time, we had the civil rights movement. And we were very united in the civil rights movement. You know, we had the Black Panther Party and stuff like that. So to draw them away from black, the black nationalism... All right, they use that feminist movement to draw the black woman away. And that's why you see, look, you see the black women in the crowd. Look, see, women of the world, you know, see, the, you know, because the black woman has such low self-esteem, you see, you know, and it's still continuing to this day. OK, so this is a, 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 a another example of his philosophies, his doctrines, voting. And we all know that it's the bankers, mainly the Rothschilds and their agents that choose the prime ministers and presidents. We know that the whole voting thing is just a joke. 
And it's just like a thing to make you think you've got power. And you blacks have been voting for a long time. And um, nothing is doing well for you. And what did that do? Now, the black woman is, uh, and the other tribes of women as well, uh, Hispanic, Native American women. Um, but in particular, they, they targeted our women. And now, look what's happening. The abortion rates are for the roof. That's what they wanted. See? Regret my abortion, you see? And many of our people are fighting this bullshit. All right, because the most dangerous place is in a black woman's womb. And Planned Parenthood was founded by Margaret Sanger. All right. And Margaret Sanger, who's a white woman. Margaret Sanger, she's related to Bill Gates. All right. And she said to exterminate. She said that she wants to exterminate uh, our people. Okay. She she said that. She openly said that. Okay. She openly said that. All right. Yeah, and this is what she said. And uh, we don't want the word to go out that we want to exterminate the Negro population. Margaret Sanger, founder of Planned Parenthood. See, so that is another one of her philosophies and her doctrines. All right. And this is the reason why our women are doing abortions, because Planned Parenthood welcomes you black women to do that because they want to get rid of us anyway. So that's what feminism has done. And it still continues on to this day. It's very sad, man. All right. So our children are suffering because of the wine of the wrath of their fornication, which is their philosophies their doctrines that they push and they use agents like this bitch Gloria Steinem uh, to do it and look at the results you see so that's why the Lord is going to really pour out his wrath on that place and the ones of you that believe in these uh, philosophies and doctrines you're going to die and you're going to die a horrible agonizing death man all right believe that man believe that let's read a little bit of this the feminist was a spy all right Gloria Steiner's new book, My Life on the Road, reencounts her life journeys and travels. All right, let's go down here. All right. She says, more or less, uh, okay, she said here, um, yeah, what is often missed or mischaracterized, however, is, is the work, the work she did as a CIA agent. Steinem was a spook. All right, CIA agents are lightly tipped, but Steiner, but Steinem spoke openly about her relationship to the agency in the 1950s and 60s after her magazine revealed her employment by the CIA front organization, the Independent Research Service. So she was a CIA agent, and she she did her job. She, 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 you know, she helped to, she, she helped to destroy our nation, man. And she used you black women to do it as well. There you go. You know, it's a sickening image, man. You stupid bitches, man. All right. And then you wonder, you wonder why uh, 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 you're um, sad and lonely alone. And 72% of you, let's look at the UK, 72% of our women in the UK are not married. You know why? Because you have this stupid, I'm an independent woman uh, uh, mindset, which was another philosophy of the devil, man. And I saw this video uh, uh, the other day, and uh, you know when you, these women say they're free and independent? All right? And I'm gonna do a separate video on this. But this was a, a this is a damn good video where it had all these women, not just the, uh, and, and, and you know what I realized, I realized that when it comes to women saying they're free and independent, it's only, the only women that say that is white women and black women, but black women say it more, all right, so that shows you that that CIA stuff really has worked, all right, and the other minorities that go to America, they get sometimes brainwashed, but the Chinese woman is not saying I'm a strong independent woman, the Asian woman, the Arab woman's not doing it. It's only our stupid women. Now, look at this. They did an experiment and they divided women and men. 
and they let them go out um, on that program Survivor, all right, with Bear Grylls. And, okay, you don't need a man. Fair enough. All right, go out and, and survive for yourself. And the women crumbled, you know. The women totally crumbled, all right. But this is this is the legacy of what Gloria Steinem has, has done, all right. So it does get a bit clunky in some areas, but I think it turned out pretty good. I hope you enjoy it. Big shout out to the original editors of The Men Together into this clip. Just the mere presence of pure, unadulterated manliness infuriates some women today. Yep. When it ought to charm you. See, the first person to disagree was the black woman. You know, that's why I, you know, what I'm serious. We're not missing out on anything, anything at the moment. You brothers that are in this truth, we're not missing out on anything because they're they're completely gone, man. You know, and we're not all all our women are not like this. But I'm going to give you a good example here, like this bitch coming up. I love men. Like, I think men are the coolest, but do, like, I don't need them to survive. Historically, women needed men because that's how the oppression structure was set up. We were hostages. We couldn't have credit cards, couldn't own property, couldn't vote, had no voice. Well, of course we partner up with a man because we needed one so that we didn't starve to death because men used force to keep us under their thumb. Now, fortunately, things have evolved, and guess what? We don't need men. Ha, <laughs> ha, <laughs> Yeah, right. Can be fun. Uh, let's walk the clip. One will be inhabited by 14 British men, while a separate island will be home to 14 British women. To get to the island, the women have no choice but to swim to the shore in the clothes they're wearing. No dry clothes, have no because we have to make mistakes. <laughs> She's crying already. Yep. <laughs> those muscles discourage us at all. But actually, in the battle to stay alive, it's one in here and in here. Not on these. Will it be brute power or mental strength? I think we will not only survive, but I think we'll thrive. I don't want to sound too early. No, I don't think we should. I don't think we should at all. But right now, this is we're winning. A few moments later, I'm used to being in forests, and I'm not going to be really happy if people start telling me I'm going the wrong way. Twelve seconds later, we have nothing to drink. We don't know where we are. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. It's your independent women, man. You can totally do this. One, two, three. The expedition party has spent all day in the searing heat, only to find they've walked in one big circle. There you go, man. There you go. There you go, man. There you go. So that's a little clip of um, you independent women failing miserably, man. And I'm going to do a separate video on that. That's a part of, of of the fornication that this devil has done. He's and you heard that black woman, didn't it? I mean, listen, I'm being honest. Who would want to actually lay down with a woman like that? Let's just say I met her and we had a one night stand, right? I would I, I, I just I, I would just feel absolute. I, I wouldn't even be able to. You know, she's so hard and so stony faced, and you know. <sighs> Oh God! I, I, you know what? I wouldn't. I I wouldn't even sleep with a woman like that, because the word "woman" means servant, and she's not willing to be a servant. So she's out of her role, and this is what this devil has done. So that's why the Lord is really going to pour out His wrath on this devil. They've done a fantastic job of destroying our women in particular, because our women are slaves. Mentally, the majority of them, the ones of you in this truth, you are different. You are transformed by the renewing of your mind. A woman like that, that you saw in that clip, they're, they're going to perish. And what's going to happen in these last days? All right. Well, what's going to happen? There's terrible judgments coming. A woman like that is going to have no protection whatsoever. 
And when Jacob's trouble happens, all her of her breaks loose, one of the things that is, is mainly going to be there, and this is, we have to warn you about these things. All right? All right? We have to warn you about these things. Okay? And one of the things that is going to be going on, like how it's been going on in Gaza, is rape. A lot of women are going to be raped. All right? Okay? So Isaiah 13 and 16. Their children shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. All you independent women, your children are going to die in front of you. All right? Their houses will be spoiled, so people are going to come in and invade your house. And their wives ravished, rape. That's what's going to happen. Not just to our women, to women in general in these last days, in Jacob's trouble. All right? So keep being your thinking that you're proud, man. All right? And keep being beguiled by this devil. Okay? So Revelations 14 and 9. Okay? And what is America's philosophies and doctrines given the rest of the world? Let's look at Iraq. All right? Af Iraq, uh, Libya, Yemen, Syria. Before America. That's Iraq before America, Libya before, Yemen before, Syria before. All right? Now, after American invasions and, and, and sponsoring different groups, Iraq is destroyed. Libya is destroyed. Yemen is destroyed. And Syria is destroyed. You know? His Arab Spring. Bringing democracy to them. You see? So he has to pay, man. He has to pay for also what he's been doing to the other nations as well. And that country. Alright? Revelation 14 and 9. And the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice. If any man worship the beast. Alright? And this is... And, this uh, 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 is the revised Roman Empire, man. All right. This is the beast, man. All right. Any man worship the beast, the beast and his image, his system. Okay. And receive his mark in his forehead or his hand. And what mark is that? It's the mark of the beast that we keep talking about, the MOTB. All right. So when all hell breaks loose, and then they, they say, this is the new currency, if you take this microchip in any part of your body, man, people are trying to get, oh, well, well, what if I take it in, in you know, well, what if they put it in my, in, in, in my knee or this, that, and the other? They mainly know where to put it. It's in your right hand or in your forehead. You know, you have the whole thing with Neuralink and Elon Musk. So when people who are atheists see videos like this, you know, they, they're just confounded because everything the Bible says is coming to pass. Okay? So if you take that, all right, whether it be in your forehead or in his hand, all right, verse 10. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. Indignation is righteous anger. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. So when the hell shall the angels come back and them chariots, the ones of us, his elect, we're going to be beamed up into the same chariot as Yahushua, Lord willing, of the elect. The rest of the elect, the men, women and children, they're going to be beamed up and we're going to actually see them nuclear missiles. All right. And, and, and the chariots beforehand. All right. Totally destroying uh, uh, Babylon the Great, man. All right? This is what's going to happen. And, and they know it's going to happen. That's why they've been putting it in these uh, uh, movies, man. Like Independence Day. All right? And we want to be um, safely in them chariots and protected from uh, 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 this uh, judgment, man. But when, when the Lord comes back, he's not going to meet them as a man, man. All right? And they know how he's coming back. He's coming back with great power and with great glory, man. All right? So he came first as a lamb. He was meek, humble. He knew what he had to do, be that sacrifice. All right? When he comes back, I will take vengeance. Isaiah 47 and 3. I will take vengeance. I will not meet thee as a man. Alright, 
So if you take that chip, all right, you will be zapped to death by the chariots or you will burn in nuclear fire with their missiles. That's America's future, all right? And there's even, um, years ago I did a video, right, where it showed an interview on, I think it was called Buzz, I think it was, uh, I think it was Buzz, Buzz TV, and they said that the chariots, UFOs, go over the American missile silos, right? And when they go over them, and remember, they can be visible or invisible, when they go over them, their uh, America's whole missile defense system shuts down. So in when World War Three hits, America won't be able to shoot any missiles, but all the other nations are going to shoot missiles on it. So it's a done deal. And that's why the elites are going to hide. All right. Verse 14, Revelation 14 and 11. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever. And when it says ever and ever, it's going to be a long period of time. Uh, America is going to be burning for a long time. It's going to be a, a monument. Great bonfire. And they had no rest day nor night who worshipped the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Because if you take it, it's more or less you're consenting to this devil system. You know, just like in slavery when they used to brand us. You know, they used to brand us, right? Well, if you take the mark it's like the bankers are branding you man you know they're making out like this is a great thing it's not you know and the black church is not warning you about the, any of this stuff man all right revelations 14 and 12 here is the patience of the saints and who are the saints we are here are they that keep the commandments of god and have faith of yahweh and the faith of yahweh shai so, to keep the commandments to the best of our ability is very important for salvation. But remember, all right, as we go to Judges, uh, let's see, Judges 5 and 11, we're rehearsing the righteous acts. So, especially now in the, in the time period we're in, like, you know, we're going to have the Passover in a, in, a, in a few days. It's a solemn assembly. It's very serious, you know. Because the way in when we was in Egypt, the Lord symboled that Passover, and you know we put the blood on our doorposts, so the judgment would pass over us. All right. In order for you to go through all this hell and have some divine protection, you could not take that mark. All right, but also you have to try and learn and keep the commandments to the best of your ability. You know. So if you're, uh, you know, one of our women and stuff, the least you can do if you say you love the Lord is to cover your head, all right? And not have a stinking attitude like those women that are brainwashed by feminism. And you know what? When you see the them black women that are, you know, that, that I sh uh, gave you that example of that woman, men did this, men did that, now, thank God, things are changed. Who's changed it? The devil has changed it. So you're okay with the devil system. So someone like that, if they don't repent, they're going to have a horrible judgment, man. All right. See, if Judges 5 and 11. They that are delivered from the noise of archers. And what, what does it mean by noise of archers? Nuclear missiles. All right. That's a metaphor. All right. An archer, you know, is someone that, you know, has weapons like, you know, archery, bow and arrows. You know, which Jake in the Middle Ages refined. Okay. But these are even worse. They're going to have... We're talking about a fire that can dissolve concrete buildings in a second. So they that are delivered from the noise of archers in the place of drawing water, which is mainly America, because that's our place of captivity. Okay? Where we had to slave day and night, and we're still uh, slaving day and night to pay the bills, man. We're just, we're, you know, we're just maintaining, man. All right? There shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. All right, so we have to rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. All right, so you're not gonna, we're not gonna get everything totally uh, uh, perfect, but the Lord likes a trier, the Lord likes a fire. You see, so that's why it's very impor important because the Lord said, "What if you love me, keep my commandments." All right, so the ones that are gonna have the death, 
the destruction are, you know, you know, our women that are brainwashed and, and our men, the two, you know, the men that are, are wicked as hell and you want to believe in a white Jesus and all that stuff, you're going to be casualties in this uh, 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 spiritual uh, 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 judgment that the Lord is going to give, uh, uh, you know, our people, because the Lord is going to judge our people first, the ones in particular that know that they're Israelites, man. The ones, so the ones of you that have been exposed to this truth and you ain't done anything about it and you still want to be worldly and, 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 and be after the devil's philosophies, the Lord is going to judge you first, man. And they're going to be horrible judgments, man. All right. But for the rest of us to have that hedge of spiritual protection, all right, we have to do what? Uh, keep the commandments of God and faith of Yahweh Shai. Faith is important. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. And the faith is much more important. All right? It's much more important. It's the most important. All right? Because there's other groups, IYC and all that. Keep the commandments, keep the commandments. But they have no faith. And they don't exalt the name of their father and his son. All right? Verse 13. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. So many of the elect will die and have integrity and not take that chip. All right. And those people are good. They're blessed, man. All right. We had a brother that died about a year and a half ago. He died of cancer in one of the great millstone groups. Hey, he's good because his spirit's with the Lord now. He fulfilled his lot. Yea, saith the spirit that they may rest from their labors. And their works do follow them. Yeah, he had loads of works. He had a channel, you know, bringing out works just like I am. You know what I mean? So his works are following him. And they're feeding uh, other members of the elect. You know, and that remnant that's going to be saved. All right. Uh, Revelations 14 and 14. And I looked and behold a white cloud. And white symbols purity. White cloud. And we saw how Yahweh is coming back. And upon the cloud one sat... Like unto the Son of Man. Yeah, Yahweh Shai, man. Coming back in that great big chariot. Like you saw in that clip. Having on his head a golden crown. And in his hand a sharp sickle. So that shows you when he's coming back. He's not coming back for sunshine and lollipops. And that's why one of the brothers in the truth. Uh, did this beautiful picture of Yahweh Shai. And with a sickle. That's kind of like what you use in, in you know to uh, gather crops in, in farms but that's that's also a, a instrument of death okay and that's what he's coming back he's coming back to deliver but he's coming back to bring death and destruction as well okay and verse 15 and another angel came out of the temple crying with a loud voice to him that sat upon the cloud which is Yahweh Shai thrust in thy sickle and reap for the time has come for thee to reap and the harvest for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So when he comes back and it's going to be in the midst of World War Three, there's going to be so much wickedness that the, 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 there's going to be so much wickedness being perpetrated on the planet Earth. The Lord's going to say that's enough now. It's, the, the wickedness has reached to a point and now we're going to judge the world and stop it, man. And that's why he's going to send back Yahusha and the angels. So death, destruction coming. And all, but also for us, deliverance, man. Okay. All right. Verse 16. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth. And the earth was reaped. And when he comes back. It's going to be, is the, the earth is going to be in a terrible state as well. Yeah, let's go to Luke 12 and 49. All right. 12 and 49. See? All right. And this is your house I'm speaking. Luke 12 49. I have come to send fire on the earth. Literal fire, man. All right. And what will I... And what will I, if it be already kindled? See, so it's going to be in the midst of World War Three when he comes back. 
All right, because that's the last prophecy in the Bible. Okay, it can't be oh the the mark of the beast is the the uh, uh, the last prophecy. You know, because how can you and how can that be? You no know, no, you're gonna have the mark of the beast way be instituted way before uh, uh, World War Three happens, man. Okay, can't have World War Three and then in, in, institute the mark of the beast. That's gonna be the last one. You know, some bugged out people are saying that, man. That don't make any sense whatsoever. So when he comes back, the the, the world is gonna be on fire with 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 tribulation anyway, man. Okay. All right, verse 17. Um, and another angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven. He also having a sharp sickle. All right. And verse 18. And another angel came out from the altar, which had power over fire and cried with a loud and cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle. Speaking to Yahusha is saying, thrust in thy sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. All right. So this place is going to be ripe with wickedness, man. And that's why this great judgment is going to happen. All right. Verse 19. And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it into a great wine press of the wrath of God. So we're talking about if we take that mark, we're going to face the wrath of our own creator. So we can't do that, man. So we have to resist it as much as possible. All right. And if you look at what's going on over there in our homeland, Palestine, you look at them uh, Palestinians, they're resisting the devil hard man you have to give them credit man they're starving and everything but they resisted the devil hard you know they have you know but it looks like our people have given up but you know why our people you know why a lot of our people are giving up you know why because you know the punishments that the lord has given us all right Because we're his his chosen people, all right. Because we are his uh, the Lord's chosen people, all right. With great power comes great responsibility, but no one has suffered more than our people and uh, people that are in a comfortable position. Like you saw that bitch earlier on talk like that, you know. Oh God, the judgment is gonna be so bad. You know, for our people, man. You know, our men included, especially you pussy, you you uh, uh 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 guys that are just doing all kinds of wickedness. Going, being church pastors, uh, uh, taking money from your own people. You know, being in the Israelite truth and 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 uh, uh making merchandise of the truth. Oh, the Lord is gonna get every single one of you in that time, man. All right, but the reason why a lot of our people are giving up is because of, of, you know, they see no hope. Because they're blinded from this truth. Daniel 9, 11. Yea, all Israel has transgressed thy law, even by departed, that they might not obey thy voice. So it's our fault, because we haven't obeyed the Lord's force. Voice, man, which is his commandments. To live in accordance of the way he has commanded us to. And we would be in a great position. All right, our, you know, our women wouldn't be doing abortions. Our men wouldn't be, uh, 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 you know, so weak and effeminate, you know. And let's, let's be honest, a lot of our men, they're not men anymore, man. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. So because we have sinned against him, all right, all right, he's given us Punishments that have drowned, that has grounded us so low that now the, the Israelite man and woman thinks that when they get the Edomite man or woman, they've got something good. <laughs> That's how low they are. That's how low they are, man. A hey, Job called them uh, 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 children of fools, base men, the lowest of the low. 
that I and he said he wouldn't put he wouldn't put them near the dog you know the dogs of his flock. But here it is, you're a Candace Owens and you know you're a, a, a holding on to him like he's a god. You know why? Because you've given up, that's why. Alright. And I feel sorry for you, man. Verse twelve, alright. And he have confirmed which he spake against us and against our judges that judged us by bringing upon us a great evil. And that great evil that God has put upon us has just destroyed our people to the point now where they look at the white man as a god. And that's why they cover white men and um, black men cover white women. And I've seen it, man. I've seen it. I've seen, I've seen both of them treat. Uh, like the black man will go out with the white woman and treat her better than the black woman, and and a hundred percent I've seen the black woman go out with the white man and treat him like a god, you know. But you've got a a a, a dog, you know. For under the whole heaven, have not been done, as has been done upon Jerusalem. So the judgments for our disobedience, no one has suffered the most. Other than us. And because we have. That suffering has made our people give up. And seek alternative ways. Of being successful. But you can do that. But they will always look at you. As just a nigger. And let me prove that. Alright. Halle Berry. She's a big star right. Alright. Halle Berry. Divorce. All right, Halle, Halle Berry said, basically, all right, when she had a divorce from one of her husbands who was the white guy, this, this guy, that's it. When she got divorced from this guy, it went to court, right? Remember, she had a, she's had a child with this guy, this guy, a daughter, right? And that, that child is a tear, okay? And, you know, there's a, a scripture in the Bible about the wheat and the tears, she said, she said in divorce that in arguments, he called her a nigger. In arguments, man. All right. That's what she said. She said in heated arguments, you know, he called me a nigger. Okay. And I remember I had the article on it. Let me see here. How they very divorce. All right. Uh, oh, the N word, N word, N, N word in divorce court. I remember I had the article, I brought it out in another video. Oh, yeah, that's it. Here you go. All right. So, for all you dumb, stupid Israelite women, whether you are black, Hispanic, or Native American, man. All right. When all hell breaks loose. They're going to show their horns because they have a perpetual hatred for us, man. All right. And the more it goes down, the more that they can goes down. All right. Their true feelings are going to come out about you. All right. Halle Berry's ex supposedly used the N word. All right. Supposedly used the N word. Since Halle Berry announced that she was pulling out of a film production to focus on a custody battle with her ex, Gabriel Aubrey, over... Their daughter, Nala, all right, news, news about the couple's relationship continues to surface. According to TMZ, a source close to Halle Berry says Aubrey was verbally abusive to the actress, even calling her the N-word. I repeat, even calling her the N-word. And she allowed this man to go up in her and bring forth seed, a child. Here's what you had to say. Nicole commented via Facebook, I would be so disappointed and very hurt if my man called me out of my name. Cammy wrote via Facebook, I think she has had issues with men, period. They said they've been trying to discredit her. But she said in court that, you know, he actually called her an N-word, man. 
So he married her. So going partnering with the devil is not going to do you anything. It's going to lead to your destruction, man. All right, and that's what this whole chapter is about: death, deliverance, and destruction. So that wine press. Imagine when you're making wine, you have grapes, and you stamp on the grapes. When your house shy comes back with the chariots, that's how this destruction is going to be. All right. Uh, last verse, Revelation 9, 14, verse 20. And the wine press was trodden without the city. So America's going to be wiped off the map. And the blood came out of the wine press, even unto the horse's bridle, by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. And if you know what a horse's bridle is, uh, did I look at a horse? When you look at a horse, right? And you know what, a horse, especially the average horse, they're, they're, they're tall, man. All right, that's why you need a, 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 a step up to, to, to get up to them. All right, they're, they're tall. But the bridle is where? Near the mouth. This is the bridle. So the Lord is saying that the blood and the destruction in the last days, especially in, in, in that dustbin, Babylon the Great, is going to be up to the horse's bridle. So it's going to be a lot of death and destruction going on, man. All right. And it's, it's, it's just how it is. So in order for us to escape this, hey, we have to pray, be humble, stay in this truth, you know. And the things that happen to us on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, that, you know, uh, 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 don't let it knock you, you know, S stay on this course because there's nothing else that's a horrible agonizing death and that and this is for our enemies all right and Yahushua is coming back to do this man to fulfill his lot and rule this world in righteousness so I hope you was edified sorry the video went on so long but it needed to be done all right check out um, um, I'm gonna do another video very soon all right, just a small one. All right, so I hope you was edified. Any questions or comments, you can put it um, on the comment board and I'll answer it. To the next one, shallow.